Number 23, write the balanced cell reaction for the cell schematic below. Calculate the standard cell potential and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. Okie dokie. So there's three things that we basically have to do here. We have to get the actual balanced equation, then we calculate the cell potential and determine whether it's spontaneous or not. Now, the easiest thing to do here, especially if they give you a cell schematic, the cell schematic is the same thing as talking about a cell diagram, is just going straight for the cell potential. Now, if we're trying to solve for the standard cell potential, that is the E cell. This little notch here just means that we're dealing with standard state conditions, and that means that we can take the values in the back of a textbook, which I have taken right here. Now, just remember that with your cell schematics, the anode is always going to be the one that's stated first, and the cathode is the one that's going to be stated last. So in this case, since they talked about copper first, I know that this has to be the anode. Since the uh, gold was talked about last, that's the cathode. And this comes in a lot of help because the formula to find the E cell is this. The E cell is the cell potential of the cathode minus the cell potential of the anode. Easierly, you could just say cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode. And it's easy because we already know from the schematic who's the cathode and who's the anode. We don't even have to worry about who's more positive or who's more negative. The cell schematic will tell us that. So the cathode was the AU and the anode was the CU. Now I went in the back of the textbook to find out what those cell potentials are for the copper and the gold. Now just know that if you're using cathode minus anode, you do not have to change any of these signs. And that's why I'm doing this right away because I don't care what the coefficients are in the balanced equation. You never multiply your E, your e values by how many you have of them. So whatever this value is, you're gonna be using these numbers. So let's just plug it in. We have E cell equals the cathode, which is the AU, 1.498, and I'm going to minus the anode, which is the 0 0.34. Okay, cool. E cell equals 1.498 minus 0.34. Whoop, not 0.31. And these numbers look good. Press enter. And since uh, my anode was only to the hundredths place, technically my answer should only be to the hundredths place. If we were doing sig figs, 1.16 volts. So that is the standard cell potential. So we got one out of the three questions already done. Now, from that information, I can actually find out if this is spontaneous or not, because I can look at the sign of my E cell, my standard cell potential. If my E cell is a positive value or greater than zero, the reaction spontaneous. If the E cell is negative, it's not spontaneous. Since this is a positive value, my answer is spontaneous. Now we answered two questions and just know that if a reaction is spontaneous, that just means that it doesn't need any additional amount of energy, like, you know, increasing the temperature to get this reaction to run. But now the question is, what is the reaction? Well, that's what we're going to find out now. And Okay, I'm gonna keep this here for now. I might drag this a little bit down. Oh boy. We are, there we go. And I think we're good for now. Let's just make this balanced equation. Now remember, when we're looking at the schematic, just know that it's always the first part of your half reaction going into your second part. So Cu is going into Cu2+, plus. Au3+, plus is going to the Au. So let's just write that there. 
Cu solid is going into Cu2 plus aqueous. And the other half reaction is Au3 plus aqueous going into Au solid. Now, in order to make these equations come together, we have to first add the electrons. Well, copper has a zero charge. This was a plus two. We always add electrons to the more positive side. So I'm going to be adding two electrons to bring it down to zero. And it kind of matches what this is going on here. Here's the Cu. Here's the Cu2 plus. I needed two electrons. Now on the other side, here was a three plus, here was a zero. You add electrons to the more positive side. And in this case, I'm gonna add three electrons. But now still, when I add this, remember those electrons have to be balanced. But uh-oh, I have two electrons and I have three electrons. So how am I gonna make them the same? Well, the next number that they have similar to each other is six. I can times the first one by three, and I can times the second one by two. So let's just pull this down a little bit. But I got to be fair. If I'm timesing the two electrons by three, I have to times everything by three. And the same thing for the other reaction as well. So now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have three Cu solids yields three Cu2 plus aqueous. And that's plus the six electrons. And once I make my new equation, I don't care about this one anymore. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. And now I'm going to have six electrons here plus two Au3 pluses yields two. AU solids. I wrote the new equation. Bada bing, bada boom. Goodbye. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rearrange this. So maybe I'll drag this down. This is going to come down with me. Thank you. Now I'm going to throw this one on up. Okay. So now it just makes it easier for us to look at just this one. Now the electrons are balanced, so I can now add the reaction together. Cancel out like substances. That's why we have to get the electrons to be balanced, because I don't want to see those in my balanced equation. And anything that's on the reactant side stays on the reactant side. Anything on the product side stays on the product side. So we have 3 Cu solid plus 2 Au 3 plus aqueous yields 3 Cu2 plus aqueous plus 2 Au solid. And that is the final answer. Should I spend any more time coloring this in? Of course I will, because I'm just that insane. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And I also just want to point out that, yeah, I mean, here we had coefficients, 3, 2, 3, 2, but it made no difference when we took those values. So don't get tricked. Don't, you know, those coefficients mean nothing when you're trying to do the ESA value. Okay, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I hope you guys are having a great day. All right, I'll talk to you soon. And we'll be doing another, another question, another lesson. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.